Welcome to the deep dive. This is where we sift through the sources, pull out the crucial insights, and, well, get you informed fast. Today, we're diving headfirst into something really compelling, Nepal's uh, quite audacious expressway and tunnel projects. We're exploring how a nation can literally, you know, tunnel its way out of geographical isolation, how it's rewriting its future one kilometer at a time. It's an epic struggle against nature, really, and um, a powerful testament to human ingenuity. Okay, let's unpack this fascinating journey. Yeah, absolutely. And what's truly fascinating here is how these really ambitious infrastructure projects, they aren't just about making it easier to get around. They're fundamentally reshaping how a country like Nepal actually functions. Mm. I mean, given its incredibly rugged, often formidable mountainous terrain, these projects are just pivotal, a huge development. Right. So our mission in this deep dive is to pull out the most important nuggets of knowledge from our sources, give you a clear picture of these... Um, monumental feats of engineering and their profound, sometimes surprising impact. Absolutely. And when we talk about landmark undertakings, our sources point us straight to what they call a mega project. That's the Kathmandu Terai Expressway, famously known as the Fast Track. Oh, yes, the Fast Track. This isn't just any road. It's a 72.5 kilometer express highway. It's set to connect Kathmandu all the way down to Nigad in Bara. And the time saving is incredible. Can you imagine a journey that currently chews up about six hours slash to just one? Just one hour. Yeah. It's hard to overstate the difference that makes. And our sources detail how this isn't just a vision. It's a concrete plan. It's being overseen by the Nepal Army, uh, targeting completion by 2027. Right. Designed for a remarkable 100 kilometers per hour, six lanes, 10 interchanges, multiple bridges, flyovers. It's really top tier design. It's the sheer scale and ambition that truly defines it as, well, a national priority. And that transformation, six hours down to one. Mm -hmm. It's transformative for any nation's growth, obviously, but for Nepal, it's particularly critical. Why specifically Nepal? Well, beyond the obvious economic boosts, reduced transport costs, faster commerce, yeah. our sources highlight how this connectivity directly addresses issues like um, food security. Think about getting fresh produce to markets far more quickly. Right, that makes sense. And enabling specialized medical teams to access remote areas in emergencies. It impacts daily survival, quality of life in ways that were, frankly, unimaginable just a decade ago. Wow. It truly integrates regions that were previously quite, quite disconnected. And what elevates this fast track to, as our sources describe it, a monumental feat of engineering are its three primary tunnels. Ah, the tunnels within the fast track, yes. These aren't minor bypasses. They are significant underground arteries carved right through the landscape. The Mahadevtar Tunnel is the longest, extending an impressive 3.355 kilometers. Over three kilometers, that's substantial. Then you have the Dedder Tunnel at 1.6 kilometers and the Lindanda Tunnel at 1.5 kilometers. Okay. Combined, these three tunnels alone stretch over 6.4 kilometers. It's a lot of tunneling. And our sources detail how their construction, using advanced drilling tech like tunnel boring machines, TBMs, marks a significant leap, you know, in Nepal's engineering capabilities. Evidently. It shows a real step up. It's truly carving through complex Himalayan geology, stuff previously thought maybe impenetrable for such large-scale projects. And, you know, if we connect this to the bigger picture, these tunnels are more than just shortcuts much more. Oh, so? Our sources really underscore their role in building national resilience. It's not just about dramatically cutting travel time. Which is huge in itself. Right. Or improving road safety in a region notorious for landslides and uh, difficult weather. These tunnels ensure year-round reliable supply chains. Yeah. That's critical for a landlocked nation heavily reliant on imports. Ah, reliability. Okay. Exactly. They effectively buffer against those geographical disruptions, providing consistent flow of goods, services, even during difficult monsoon seasons. So the fast track is clearly a colossal undertaking, but it's not the only game in town, right? Beyond this flagship project, our sources reveal Nepal is making an even broader commitment to tunnel-based transportation. It almost feels like a national strategy against its formidable terrain. That's a good way to put it. What's the strategic thinking behind these other crucial projects popping up across the country? Well, what's fascinating here, as you said, is how these different projects, they sort of collectively form a coherent national strategy. It's all about overcoming these geographical barriers. Take the Nagtunga Nabis Tunnel Road, for instance. Okay, Nagtunga Nabis. Our sources describe it as Nepal's very first major highway tunnel. It measures 2.68 kilometers. Right. And as of late 2024, it's apparently over 82% complete. 
expected to finish by 2026. So that one's quite far along. Yeah. And this project is specifically designed to ease that notorious traffic congestion on the Prithvi Highway, a major bottleneck. Oh, I've heard about the traffic there. Exactly. And it should significantly cut down travel time between Kathmandu and the Western region. So it's about immediately addressing existing uh, pain points. That focus on the Nagkunga Tunnel really highlights the immediate relief these projects can offer. What about some of the more um, visionary, maybe further out projects the sources mentioned? Indeed. Looking a bit more to the future, there's the proposed Toka Chahar Tunnel near Kathmandu. Toka Chahar. Which, at a proposed 3.3 kilometers, will directly connect Toka to Nuakot. The sources say it could save over an hour of travel time. Okay, so connecting the capital to agricultural areas better. That seems to be the goal, yes. Yeah. Targeting better connectivity there. Then, uh, still in the planning phase, we have the Duran Mulgat Tunnel. Duran Mulgat, where's that? That promises to open up access between Koshi Province and the hills beyond Duran. Again, fostering regional economic integration. Hmm, interesting. And even looking within the city, there's a concept under the Kathmandu Ring Road Tunnel Plan the Goteshwar Balkamari Tunnel, that aims to tackle inner-city congestion head-on, improve urban mobility. Right. So you see, these projects aren't just about new roads. They are about connecting communities, facilitating economic exchange, and really strengthening the nation's fabric. Of course, undertaking such, well, extensive infrastructure development in a dynamic, mountainous place like Nepal, it can't be easy. Mm. Our sources do acknowledge significant hurdles beyond the, you know, unstable geology and the constant threat of landslides. Did they highlight political or social challenges? Things like land acquisition, community impact. How is Nepal navigating that? Yeah, and this raises an important question, doesn't it? How do nations overcome such large scale hurdles, especially when they involve complex geology and social dynamics? Exactly. Our sources indicate that, well, yes, land acquisition and community resettlement are significant considerations mm -hmm. alongside, you know, the usual suspects like budget delays and the constant need for specialized tunneling expertise. Right. You need the know-how. Absolutely. But despite all that, Nepal is undeniably pushing forward. There's a strong determination evident. The outlook seems to be one of persistent advancement. These projects are clearly seen as essential for unlocking growth, enhancing safety, and fostering unity across the country. So a long-term vision. It really seems so. It's a testament to a long-term vision for strategic infrastructure, prioritizing national well-being despite those um, immense challenges. It truly is. These aren't just infrastructure projects, are they? They feel more like like lifelines, arteries of progress, connecting regions and people in really profound new ways. So what does this all mean when you boil it down? Nepal's expressways and tunnels, they're far more than just concrete and steel, aren't they? Much more. They are critical arteries of progress, opening doors to prosperity, definitely enhancing safety, and uh, weaving a more unified nation out of its incredible challenging mountains. And maybe here's something for you, the listener, to mull over. How might this transformative infrastructure, how might it not only change daily life and the economy within Nepal, but also potentially redefine the country's national identity, its place on the global stage? It really demonstrates remarkable resilience and um, forward thinking, especially when you consider they're doing this in the face of some of the world's most challenging geographical adversity. Something to flip about. 